I have a new tool in my toolbox that you might also want to have. I'm Bushi, let's talk about it. You might be especially interested in having such a tool if you're working or have to do with small minuscule things, like for example, SMD components. My own history with SMD components goes back 20 years. For this video, I was thinking about like, how long do I actually have to do with SMD components? And it dawned on me that it's 20 years already. Like what the heck? How old am I? What, what? So I started studying electrical engineering and computer science in university. And with the exposure to this topic, and also as I was kind of interested in the, in the topic, I started to mess more and more with electronics. I, I built some circuitries on a breadboard. And then from there, I realized that you can, with a few components that you can have at home, you can create your own PCBs very easily at home. You need a couple of chemicals, a UV light source, maybe a drill and, and stuff. And that's, that's it to create something like this at home. And with this, it's actually very cheap and you can go through the prototype stages quickly. You can iterate really quickly and go through, you know, one stage didn't work, next stage didn't work and so on and so forth. And that is also the first time that I got exposure to SMD components. As you can imagine, if you create something like this at home, you want to spend at least effort as possible doing that. Which means that if you have uh, old fashioned components, first of all, they are bigger than SMD components. They are larger, they consume more space, but also they have pins, like pins sticking out of, of the end of it like resistors, capacitors, etc. Which means that you need to drill holes for each and every pin that you have and want to connect to your board. That is not the case for SMD components. SMD components you put on the surface, you're done. That's so easy, so nice. With the downside that SMD components are smaller. It's advantage, disadvantage at the same time. So you might be able to position everything, but then later checking if everything is, is fine and uh, there are no bridges involved due to the solder. It's get, it gets harder and harder. There are some techniques to, to check that. For example, shining light through the PCB is, if that's possible, there's nothing on the other side, no PCB, no, no copper on the other side. It's, that's perfect, you can see everything. I can cheat a bit by taking off my glasses because I'm short-sighted and that gives me a magnification boost if I take them off. But at the same time, I don't want to do that when I need to solder something like close by. And a couple of weeks ago, there was a repair job that I needed to do for a micro USB socket that had five pins under the plug, under the socket. And they were so close together that it was impossible to do with the naked eye. There were also some traces gone. Uh, the data line traces were gone on the PCB that needed to be repaired. It was just not possible to do that. And that is where I started to look into the topic further. Is there a microscope that I can use for the job? I have seen those microscopes on Amazon for a long time, for decades almost that look really flimsy, they are really cheap. And I thought, this is no option, that cannot be good. I'm not trying that even out because I don't want to get uh, disappointed again buying something cheap that is not living up to my quality needs. And that was the moment when I started to do a bit of a research to check what else on the market is actually available. And I was surprised how many different companies are out there and offering products in a relatively acceptable price range. And while I was searching, one company stood out to me and was reappearing and reappearing in different reviews and videos and, and also in the feature set that I was looking for. And it was Andon Star. Andon Star is a Chinese company from China. Um, and they seem to be in the market for quite a while now, having iterated through a couple of product uh, versions and have a portfolio that were re that was really interesting to me. So I was looking for, okay, let's, let's cut it short. This is what I got. <laughs> um, I was looking for this. I was looking for a standalone version that I can use and put on a table and use without a different screen or something. So there are also microscopes where you only have the microscopic camera and then you attach a lens to it and that's it. And you need to put it, um, store the, the footage on an SD card or stream it out via HDMI or whatever. I was, but I wanted to have a standalone so that I'm not dependent on any external components. I wanted it to be 4K so that I can also use it in this kind of framework then for a video. That was kind of interesting for me because when I 
filmed the putting together process of this PCB, I realized that without a macro lens, which I don't own and I didn't want to buy any, it's really hard to capture. And you can see that in the video that it's, I mean, you can see what I was doing, but it's not in detail and I was not happy with that. So uh, I wanted it to have an SD card so that I can also store data on the SD card. Um, a HDMI output was also good to have, which this one also has. Now with all those feature requirements at hand, I was going through the Unknown Star portfolio and pretty quickly honed into this particular version, which is an AD246S-M. It has 4K, SD card, HDMI, HDMI output, and a magnification between 60 and 2000-ish. Although I read somewhere that uh, more than 1600 is physically not possible. I didn't go into the details, so take it with a grain of salt. Comes with three different lenses for the different ranges, which is nice. Yeah, it's standalone and has a 7-inch display. So the 246, the 6, stands for 7 inches, while there's also a version with 9, which is then standing for 10 inches display. Um, but here we are. Comes in this box, which is unspectacular, but doing its job. And then I took it out and was really surprised by the build quality. I mean, this is all plastic and it doesn't look, it doesn't look like super cheap, but it also doesn't have any expensive appeal, which it doesn't need, um, but it, it also doesn't uh, try to, you know, looking like super expensive, expensive, but still it has a fair build quality, in my opinion. And the rest is all aluminum rods and pieces and components and the, for example, the mechanisms are tight, they are snug, they are not wiggling, there is no, there is no strange feeling to it. It is all rock solid, I would say. I knew what I was expecting or what I could expect from it, of course, because I did some, some research, but having it in my own hands, I was kind of confirmed in the expectation and the build quality is just, is good. It's very good. For $200 or 200 uh, euros, I think you cannot expect any more than this. And now image quality wise, it gets even better. Shall we have a look together? Okay, let's, let's, let me connect it quickly. Okay, so it's one other thing that um, is also nice is a remote control. And you wonder, okay, I mean, I'm sitting in front of it. Why do I need a remote control? But when you have a huge magnification and you set up the focus and the center of attention, then you don't want to touch any button here because that is potentially moving everything and turning everything up, upside down. So it's nice to have a remote control and do like this. And this starts the recording. So that is a nice little detail in my opinion. Let's start with something that we already kind of know, which is the PCB that I was showing in the other video, how I built it, how I manufactured and positioned all the and arranged the components and then soldered them in place. Let's actually have a look how well I did, shall we? All right, so here we are. Let me fix the focus quickly. What is that red? Okay, I need to make sure that my head is out of, out of view here. And here we are. Okay, so that's actually the LED strip. Here is the board. So this is now the, the lens with that's called L. It has a magnification between, let me lie, 60, between 60 and 240, and a working distance between 90 millimeters and 300 millimeters. All right, let's have a look. So again, focus, focus, focus. So you can tell that I'm pretty close. Let's move up a bit, shall we? Let's give us a bit more overview. Now I need to re readjust here. All right, okay. So this gives us a bit of more overview what is going on. Now you can also see that the image quality is actually really good. Even in the corners, it is sharp and there's no, um, no deterioration in the corners of the, of the image. And it is crisp 
and it's clear that I can see everything that I want. I can really give it a more light because it was a bit, I think, unhappy with the light situation. I can readjust the lights in such a way that I can see also the depth of things better. That is really nice. Um, and this component here was the one I was talking about, maybe not in the long video, but at least in the short that I did about the, the soldering job, where I ordered the wrong piece for this footprint or messed up the footprint in the process. I think it was kind of a combination of both. <laughs> um, I double checked it just now and uh, it's an SOT two, three. And there are different sizes of this and it was really not clear from the documentation which is which. So let's get closer and have a look if, that's, if that messed up is actually a problem or not. So I was saying that the footprint is too large for the component, but it is fine. And now you can see what I meant by saying that <clears throat> even though the footprint is not matching perfectly, due to the surface tension of the solder, the component got pulled in kind of the best possible orientation. Not, not, not quiet, because this one is a bit you know, closer to this pad here. But you can clearly see, if I now move the light, for example, you can clearly see that there's no interconnection solder-wise. Although here, I'm not 100% sure. So let's inspect it further. Maybe we're, okay, we're a bit too close. I need to readjust and go a bit high because now we are at the 90 millimeter distance. Okay, so here you can see that there is something. Here it's visible that there is something that could be metal. And that is something I didn't see before with the naked eye. So let me go get my tweezers. Okay. So now I would do kind of a live repair job. Okay, where is my tweezer? Oh, it's, I, I'm in the wrong position. So this is what I meant. Have you seen it? Now it's gone. And it was actually no solder, it was uh, flux, flux residue. And doing it like this, even without measuring, I can fix, inspect and fix such a problem quickly and be sure that there's no short between those two pins, which is nice. And uh, speaking of small, this resistor here is actually a 402, which is not the smallest one that you can find, but you will probably admit or confirm that it is small. And now you can, without any problem, inspect that and see that the solder job that I did is actually fine. It's not perfect, it's not beautiful, it's a bit too much solder, I would say, <laughs> um, but it is fine. Yeah, and what's also very interesting is now going to the LED light strip is how those integrated LEDs are actually looking like. And you can see that there is a chip in the middle of the LED. That's this black one, which is with gold wires connected to the outside pins, which is this silvery, silvery plates. The ground one, I think, is the big one on the side and there are those three thingies that are sitting there which is ah now you see what i mean by not touching this is actually a good thing and i needed to tighten those screws um so those three things are the the rgb colors and then this big area here although you cannot see the component the actual light producing component is the white led so this one is an rgb w LED 
integrated LED component. All right. So maybe let's move over to yeah, maybe this one here. That was that was the the board that I was showing you, and to a solder job that is not looking so nice because I was doing that all by hand, I think. No, I, I was doing that in the oven, I think, from the looks of it. And then you can go down and tap individual pins and see if they move. Ooh, it's still dirty. Is it still there? No. See if anything is loose. If I can move it to the side, that would indicate the pin is not soldered perfectly correctly. And also what's what's really interesting is looking at my traces. So those is a this is a board that I manufactured at home using um, a mask that I printed on my inkjet printer. And then you put this you you print on on a foil and then you put the foil on top of the coated um, raw PCB and shine UV light onto all of that. And while the mask is preventing to um, destroy the coating where the mask is sitting, the other parts are then exposed to the UV light. And then you develop this, which takes the photoresist completely off. And then when you put this into an acid bath, uh, the, the acid is attacking and taking away those copper lines that are have not been protected by the photoresist. And as you can see here, those lines should be straight, but they are actually not straight. Curved, they are curved and bent. And actually not very perfect and I wonder why it seems to be that in I've never seen that actually on with the naked eye that is really hard to see but it looks like in in the up direction it is worse than on this direction and I think also here it's already visible that there's a slight undercut of the acid, so underneath the copper layer, which is usually not something that you want. So I guess, yeah, but I cannot, I cannot get the tweezer underneath. Although the tweezer is not, it's not minuscule enough, I think. Yeah, but that is that is really interesting. I've never, I've never looked in such a great detail onto the PCBs that I manufactured at home put in the acid bath. You can imagine that you cannot get as small as you want with those traces because if if they're not perfect, like if the process is not as professional as a professional service, you if you're making those too thin then you get problems. Do I have another one? Yeah, let's have a look here because there are traces that are even even finer. Yeah so this is a flash up PCB for those sensor nodes that I was creating long time ago it has a microprocessor and a zigbee radio okay and what i'm instantly spotting i mean you can also see that with the naked eye but Ooh. okay so there are some traces that are getting really thin it's hard to see with the copper layer but yeah no, this is better when it's reflecting you can see that those lines a borderline okay. I mean, I can clearly see the trace, so it's fine. But uh, especially this one here is getting really thin at the end there at this point. And it's also not consistent. So when I look at this, this looks much, much bigger, but also it's not uniform. So I would say looking at this, 
I'm at the edge of what my process back then was able to achieve. And also, obviously, that there is a short <laughs> between those two pins. But apparently, maybe those pins are not connected ones because I don't see traces on the other side. Yeah, they seem to be open. You can see it. Or? But it, no, there's a connection. There's a connection here. You can see there's nothing behind this pad. There's no interconnection on the other side, but here and also there, it looks like those two are interconnected. It might be that those are two ground pins and there was an interconnection of the pads themselves, um, which is not something you want to do without a solder mask, obviously, for those reasons, because I mean, it's fine. If, it's, if they are interconnected anyway, but you don't want to have a solder bridge like this between two pins, it's just not a nice style. Yeah, okay. So obviously I was doing that back in the day. Here you can see it as well. Yeah, those two pins are interconnected by a copper connection. And if you have a lot of solder paste, then a bridge is forming during the solder process. And that is uh, obviously not something you really want. And now you can already see and I can tell why this microscope is so great. I can quickly go over all those pins on the left here I'm looking right now and see if there's anything wrong with the solder job. And I can clearly see that it is just fine. I think here I might have done some some repair job because I, I see those those lines here, although it doesn't really make sense that they're going over here all the way. So I don't know. Maybe something scratched simply the PCB on this on this uh, location because also the copper line seems to be slightly impaired. Yeah. Okay. Also, the vias are not okay. There, actually, <laughs> you see, I realized that the via might be might be not perfect. That is why I put some extra solder there, solder tin. Yeah, but all in all, I have the feeling with this PCB, I was really trying to push my process. <laughs> the <laughs> look how close, how close it's going to the edge that I cut out there. Nice, nice. Okay, this is ugly. Oh, this is so ugly. But uh, I guess, yeah, it worked nonetheless. But yeah, those I think are 1206s. So those are really, really big ones. This is obviously, of course, also ugly. Very good. Ah, and here I did, ah, okay, this is, this is a repair job. So I put some copper, copper wire here that is, that is insulated, by the way, so that is not just copper, it is insulated by um, a, a layer, extra coating layer. But I needed to interconnect, apparently, uh, the ground plane that is here. <laughs> okay, I see. Yeah, makes sense. So I was interconnecting this ground plane here to something, uh, some other place, because I forgot that this needs to be interconnected as well, most likely. This is the zip tie, if you wonder. Yeah, okay, cool. And the other side of the pins. Let's click them, quickly check them. There's some residue still left, but it's fine. This short we have seen already. Okay, yeah, so cool. Um, yeah. You know what? Let's have a last peek onto this uh, with a bigger lens because that might be really interesting. Okay, so this was now lens L and there is now lens V, which is the crazy one. And let's have a look through this lens. So it's nice that you can inter interchange those lenses. Obviously, that is also a bit of a hassle, but yeah, I guess there's no free lunch, so it's fine. Where's the... Yeah. 
Did I put the wrong one? Holy stokes, do I need to get close? Holy moly. Okay, I need to do something else. I need to lift it up slightly because otherwise I'm not able to hold it. Shine light and get close enough. At the same time. Wee wee wee. Wee wee wee. Now it's going to be interesting. If I can find a spot that we were looking at earlier. Okay, maybe if I push it down. Where was this tiny line? It was on this side. Ah, it's, it's hard to get there because of the cable that is mounted to it. Oh, I need to get even closer. Holy moly. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Okay, I think that's that's too much to to do. It's not possible. Okay, you are the okay. Those are the ugly. Where's the? Where's the edge of the PCB? Here, ah, here. That was this corner where it's so close to the to the cut edge. Oh, <laughs> how it's shaking! <laughs> Crazy. Okay, here. Yeah, you see, you can get really close if you want and inspect. Look how crooked that is. There's a huge dip in the notch there. Yeah, that's the LED. Yeah, okay, I think that's not of much use, but this, this lens is really crazy and the magnification is also crazy. Alrighty. Okay, you know what, let's, let's move to the last lens quickly. I'm not sure I ever used it. I think I didn't. I think I didn't, but I'm not fully sure. That is now lens A. It has a magnification between uh, 18 and 720, depending on how close you are. And also a huge range of object distance between 12 millimeters and 320 millimeters. That's now going to be interesting. Okay, let's see how big things are. Ah, okay. So that's actually really good for overview purposes. Oh, huh, I didn't know that. That's nice. Man, I should have tried that earlier. Oh, that's really good. That's cool. I didn't know that. Nice. Okay, and how, what, what happens if you go closer? Can you? Uh -huh. Cool. Okay, so I, kn I knew there was something. Oh, that's actually nice. That is nice. Look at that shining light into the epoxy. Which reveals then the short, which short is that actually? Ah, that's a dip. Ah, okay, that's not the short. But looking here, can we now see that there is another connection? Yeah, now you can see that there are some lines built in. It's still not very, very clear. Let me try to enhance the picture even more. Yeah, but there you can see it. I'm looking here. The moment. Yeah, you can tell that that is shining. There's something, something, so you can see it shining through here. Then it's blocking the view, 
And then if I move further up, there's something else that is connected to the pad. So those two pads have an interconnection on the PCB. And what is happening there, I guess it's just a ground loop. Okay. Also, this is also really crisp. So the image quality is really good. And you can you can see the thickness of the copper layer, which is thin, which is really thin. It's I think 35 micrometer thick. So it's really thin. But you can still you you are able to to see the thickness here. And almost you could almost tell how the how it's how the how the vertical shape of the copper line is there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that was actually a nice excursion into my past and my past projects, SMD and electronic wise. How about you? So do you also play with the idea to buy a microscope? Maybe maybe you play with the idea now. Let me know in the comments and let me know if you liked this video. And if you did, then you can express that. And if you don't want to miss a subsequent video, then you can subscribe to the channel. That would make me happy and bring a smile to my face. And with that, I'll leave you to it, to the next video. See you soon. I'm Jobushi, over and out. Bye.